Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins and welcome to another episode of Spin Weekly. Today we are natural dyeing with Wode. Wode is the blue of my people and I am enthusiastic. So stay tuned. So Wode is a very cool dye. It works similarly to indigo and what happens is you put it in the vat and you balance it out with these chemicals and it goes from not a blue, which would which is what you would expect bleh, from an acid dye, but in a natural dye like wood or indigo, it turns kind of a yellow, brown, green color, and then the top goes like a metallic purple. It's so freaking cool. Now, it does take a lot more preparation effort than acid dyes, and there are some noxi noxious fumes that you have to deal with, which uh, most people do this outside, but it's the middle of the winter and it was snowing, so I did it inside with my windows open, which probably was just as cold as doing it outside. <laughs> um, so, yeah, also... Um, I did not keep my dye vat active because I bought a very small amount of wood, just enough for the Patreon February people. Um, but you could buy a larger amount and just let it ferment and use it over and over and over again because it kind of self-sustains, which is really cool. Um, acid dyes do not do that. <laughs> So yeah, I am excited to show you how this worked. If you are interested in the voiceover with all of my thoughts and kind of research, which this is not a how-to video. This is just my personal exploration of the thing. Um, so yeah, you can find that voiceover on the Patreon if you're a Patreon patron. If you're not, you can join for as little as a dollar a month, which is super affordable at $12 a year if you want to stay on for a year. Um, and then you get all of the voiceover videos and sometimes music videos like last week's unboxing. You guys know I talk really fast and then I get out of breath when I'm excited. So I'll meet you on the other side. All right, so we begin with some water. Um, I began to fill up my bucket before I started the dye solution. I don't recommend this because the dye solution had to sit for quite some time. So um, I vote you begin to soak your fiber, which is what I'm doing here, and then once your dye solution is in its incubation period, then add the water to your pot. So I had to manually boil my water in pots to add to my plastic container. If you're outside doing like the OG method over a campfire, you don't have to do this, but I think for most of us, you'll probably have to heat on an external source. So there's a couple of different compounds that you put in here. Um, I close up zoomed on it so you could see what the names of it are. Um, and following the instructions that Yarn Tree provided, I added the correct amount at the correct time and stirred it up together in a heated glass container. Now, I think I probably would have done a double boiler if I had known because I don't think my solution got hot enough because I had quite a bit of sludge at the bottom of my container. Now I couldn't find anything about woad sludge, but I know indigo sludge is a thing. Um, so I just don't, <laughs> I don't know if that was because my water wasn't hot enough or what. So I'm hoping to be able to learn more about woad and get back to you on that for the future. Um, because I just fell head over heels in love with this process. I mean, it was a nearly spiritual connection for me. Um, I mean, I sped this up so you can see the color change before your eyes. Do you see how it's going yellow, green, and then the top has that metallic purple blue? That's just the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. I just whoa and to know that my people have been doing this for thousands of years 
just wows me. I, I don't even have words. So <laughs> I'm sure my people would be cringing at all the weird things that I'm doing. This is my clumsy first attempt. Um, so right off the bat, um, the chemical process seemed to be on point. All the colors were the same. I didn't have any problems with too much oxidization or not enough. I, you can see it's got the yellow green right away. But you can also see all that sludge. <laughs> um, so I got really good color coverage. Um, the instructions say dip it for 10 minutes and then let sit. And I didn't know if they meant soak it for 10 minutes or dip it continually. So I did a bunch of research and the indigo said don't let it touch the sludge at the bottom. So I went with some dipping and I did not dip for 10 minutes. You'll see kind of how long I put it in there. I just dipped several times before I went for a set. Um, I think the next time I will try a soak. Um, because I did not achieve a really intense color coverage. And I'm a little worried that's because it got the sludge on it. Because in the indigo vats, they say if you get the sludge on it, then you've ruined it. The sludge will coat the fibers and um, none of the dyes will actually adhere in subsequent dips. But <laughs> I didn't hear how to fix that or like what, what to do about that problem. So I need to get some more natural dye books because the internet doesn't seem to have a lot of readily available information on that. So <laughs> I guess, peeps, that's my new project. I gotta become a natural dye guru because uh, acid dyes, I don't hate them. I obviously do them frequently, but they don't hold special places in my soul like some of the other aspects of fiber. But this thing does. So we'll see if this is just a quick flirty love or a long-term love affair but dude do you see how it comes out this weird yellowy green and then it changes color you can also see the powdering of what I think is the sludge on the fibers so that's what I'm worried about uh, I don't know if that contributed or not I, I will not know until either I find information about it or I uh, do some more experiments. And I'm kind of okay with both options because experimenting is really cool. But do you see the color changes there? That's just, it's just magical. I, I have no other way to describe it, especially when I squeeze that out, you can just see the immediate change as the air hits that, that pigment. I, it, Wow. Just wow. So, um, I don't have much beyond that any really big epiphanies about the actual dye process, though I loved looking at the different steps and that intensity of color. Dang! Almost all of that washed out. <laughs> it's, it's a kind of a matte blue. That's another interesting thing is it provided very much like a denim. I mean, we know that denim jeans were dyed with indigo traditionally, and that's the look that commercial dyers go for, um, and woad is related to indigo. Um, so, I mean, that seems really obvious that it would be very denim-like, but it more like a 80s, 80s light wash denim when I was hoping for more of a, like, emo skinny jeans dark wash denim, like I wear. <laughs> so that's where I think the soaking might come in. And you can kind of, as I dip it in that clear container, you can see how the sludge at the bottom is being agitated. Um, I really tried to keep it dippable, um, whereas my first instinct was to just to throw the fiber in there and wait for it to cool to room temperature, um, like I would do with the acid dye. But then I read that you're supposed to dip it, so yeah another thing i struggled with with this plastic container is keeping a consistent temperature on it it was supposed to stay warm and it didn't stay warm for all that long so um, again <laughs> more experimentation is needed um 
as well. If you have any information on this, please shoot me your favorite resources. I would love to read them and share them and experiment with them. <laughs> so as I did this dipping, I dipped probably six or seven times more than you see in the video per thing, which was pretty labor intensive. This whole process took me all afternoon, so probably like five or six hours. Um, including the solution making, which was a lot of waiting around. But um, when I was finished, because uh, the dye bath was mostly exhausted because it was only supposed to dye one pound, but I don't think I completely exhausted it because I don't think I got good deep coverage. But anyway, I exhausted it by changing its pH value um, by adding citric acid and vinegar, and you can see how it instantly goes dark blue. Which is why I'm pretty darn sure I got only a tiny fraction of the dye out of there. So I think I wasted most, most of it. But we gave it back to Mama Earth, and it was pH neutral at that point, and it melted our snowy snow. So that was pretty cool. Another thing I think I did wrong is I don't think I added enough soap. Because when I dried it the first time, it did not get clean. It smelled funny. It still had a massive amount of dye runoff. Um, it, it was not good. I did not get it rinsed enough, even though I did three rinses and a soap wash. I used Unicorn Beyond Clean, um, but I this sample bottle was like half empty already, so I don't think that was enough for a pound of wool. I think I should have used the full sample bottle. Um, yeah, you can see the water, and it continued to be that color all the way until after Oh, I didn't even use half. Maybe I did. I did not use enough. <laughs> there was not enough. That is the moral of that story. But, uh, yeah. And I also think I would have done it one hanger at a time rather than all three in that size of water. So I messed that up. Um, I was trying really hard not to felt it. And I did end up felting it slightly for my Patreon people just because I had to go through and do a completely no set of wash and soap and rinse and the whole nine yards after it had already dried, which was really annoying. But um, yeah, I also think that I did not get enough acidity in that set. You're supposed to soak it with vinegar. I think I needed to soak it with citric acid, which is what I did with the second wash. And as soon as I applied citric acid, almost all of the dye run out cleared up. So, that's that. I, I think that would have been helpful. So in my next experiment, oh, 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 oh. Here's my beautiful husband, looking beautiful. I, I couldn't help but uh, take a, a cutie shot of him. So this is after they were rinsed. Um, well, that's before they were rinsed. I don't know why I put this footage in this particular location. I was just overtaken by his cuteness. But there we go. You can see on the right, it was all shrinkened. That's because it was not washed out properly. So this is what it dried off to. And the shade did not decrease anymore. Even though there was some dye run out, it, it stayed that shade. But you can see it's a lot lighter than what Okay, was that not the coolest thing you've ever seen? Like if you are not familiar with natural dyes, did you not have your socks blown away with like freaking awesomeness. If you are familiar with natural dyes, I'm sure you're probably like, dude, I know, where have you been? Like, what world have you been living on that you have literally never tried this before and you've been in the fiber community for like almost 10 years now? It's like nine, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, almost 11. Uh, that little that little moment aside there, uh, in almost 11 years of being in the natural community, or natural community, uh, wool community, I've not tried natural dye. And that's because early, early on in my career, I read this whole article, which I now know to be basically a rant, about how natural dyes are terrible for the environment, they're incredibly dangerous, they're not effective if you even want to be a professional, you need to use the acid dyes or the synthetics. Um, and I didn't know anything about anything because it was early on. And so that really stuck with me and I never did any more research and I don't know why. 
because herbs and crunchiness are my jam. But fast forward to recently and I've started reading natural dye books and following a lot of natural dye accounts on Instagram and really falling in love with it. Um, and so, yeah, for February, because it's Brigid's month, I wanted to go back to my personal roots and the roots of Brigid and pick up Woad, which is one of the oldest dyes known to man and very, very integral into the Celtic and Viking uh, cultures. So that's where we have the Woad coming in. That's my, my inspiration there. And then the Falkland Bay, Falkland base that I used, um, the Falkland Islands are in that area. So I wanted to go with a relatively isolated um, Celtic-y, british -y wool. So that, that's, that's that. Um, yeah, so I would love to hear your dye recommendations. Any books or resources or shops or tips or anything regarding natural dyes, let me know in the comment section down below because I am seeping myself in this natural dye knowledge. Now I am planning, I have to for my herbalism school that I'm taking, you guys know I'm a student midwife, um, and part of that for me personally is to become a herbalist. Um, I may or may not go the path of clinical herbalism. Clinical herbalism requires an apprenticeship similar to midwifery. So I don't know if that's in the cards for me, but it might be. I think that would be really awesome to be a clinical herbalist as well as a midwife. But I really would like to focus on um, self-service pharmacy, like farm with an F-A-R-M. Um, and then doing a lot of community work and foraging and things like that. All that to say, I have to make a garden for my herb school that I'm enrolled in. Duh. <laughs> and I would really uh, like to do a dyer's garden as part of it. So I've got it kind of divided into a few different sections. I have a woodland environment at my parents' house where I'll be during the growing season. And... Um, yeah, there's a lot of really interesting dyers, herbs, and plants that will grow well in that environment. So I hope to keep you guys updated there as well. So yeah, I think I've covered everything and yes. Oh, I said in the voiceover, but I didn't say here, uh, the plant material, the woad and the different chemical compounds I got from Yarn Tree and I have linked them down below and I thought they were really cool and it was her instructions that I followed and you can see the little paper in the video that's from her. They come with the woad powder. It was very fast and speedy and I'm hashtag not sponsored but would like to be sponsored. Um, send me all of your products. Really, I'll try all of them. <laughs> by the yarn tree, but I really enjoyed their surface. So check them out if you're interested in using what I used or any other kind of natural dye. They have a lot of different options and they're quite affordable. You can buy them in small amounts. So now I think that's it. Yep. Thinking, thinking, nope, don't think of anything more. So as usual, a huge thank you to our Patreon people for, for supporting this. A huge thank you for everyone who's a spinning wheel. Somebody just sent me a picture of their very first yarn they had on a polywog from me. That's so cool. And a big thank you to everybody who likes, subscribes, and comments. You guys are awesome, and I will see you next time. Bye.